Phil and I dated for two years before we found out that he had cancer. I met Phil when I was 18 years old. My best friend was dating Phil's brother and she said she wanted to introduce me to this guy that I was perfect for. I would say Phil was your average college-aged kid. He was very into sports. School was secondary to him. He had good values. He was brought up in the church and I could see that in him. But as far as his actual walk with God, his relationship with Jesus, it was definitely lacking. We knew that something had been wrong. He hadn't felt well for quite a while. He had no energy. He'd go to bed at like six o'clock at night. And we were in college, so clearly that was not normal. Getting your initial cancer diagnosis and then going through treatment, you're just kind of walking in blind. You have no idea what you're getting into. Um, but it was kind of one of those things you have to take one step at a time because it would be so overwhelming if you knew what the whole process would look like. Um, so we started doing chemo. The more treatments he did, the more sick he got each time and the longer it took to bounce back. Phil was in treatment six months or so. There is nothing quite like the feeling of having your doctor say that you're cancer free or you're in remission. Our relationship was a lot more serious after walking through that together and we got engaged and started planning a wedding. Once I heard that, I was so mad. Like, I, I was angry because now I had to tell not my girlfriend, Carrie, I had to tell my fiance, Carrie. Probably one of the hardest things I've ever had to do was say, uh, Carrie, I don't know if I'm ever gonna be your husband. I don't know if we're ever gonna get married. Uh, I had a job, you know, at this time, so it was different. I had all these kids in my classroom that were excited that I was there. So I had to break the news to my kids. So we'd go outside and we had a little class meeting. And so it was a super bright, sunny day. And um, I started talking about faith. And then I said, what's the promise, you know, that God's given us, that he's always going to take care of us, you know, especially after Noah and the flood and all that. And the kid raised his hand and he goes, a rainbow. And I said, yeah, that just shows that God is promising to take care of us. And um, I said, I just want to let you know that I talked to the doctors and I have cancer again. And before you know it, the whole class is crying. And then I look up, I lose it uncontrollably because what God had painted in the sky was one of the most clear rainbows that I've ever seen. And I knew right there that was the moment for the kids and the moment for me um, to say, I'm gonna be with you. The fact that that promise was so clear and so timely, I walked away from that just saying, all right, I don't know what the future holds, but we gotta keep going. The next day I had to check in the hospital again and uh, do it all over. So I went through the six months of chemo and then I got ready for a stem cell transplant. Couldn't have a sip of water for a month, you know, fed by tubes on oxygen, can't have visitors and you just kind of lay there and it was my breaking point. And said, God, you know, if it's time for me to go to heaven, I'm ready. Like, I believe that Jesus died for me. But if not, I promise God to give the rest of my life to you. And once I said amen to that, I started seeing things differently. He started the process of getting Phil's friends going while in the hospital. We had attorneys come down to the hospital and um, we signed paperwork to get everything started while he was too sick to sign his own name. So Phil's friends literally started in his hospital bed. It's truly a gift when God allows you to be used to start something. So we've seen us go from delivering a one care package to now supporting nearly 15,000 people a month through cards in the mail, through care packages, through hospital visits. So we named the building the Hope Center solely for one reason. Our purpose is all about hope. When we talk about hope from a biblical way, we talk about something we can count on. It's rock solid. So I get the question a lot, you know, what I would say to someone who's going through cancer. The biggest thing I'd say to them is to find that community of people to be around. And it's okay to not have all the answers. It's okay to not know how you're gonna navigate this. If you have questions, that just means you're breathing and you're hearing you got a new diagnosis. When you don't know what's next, God's already there. He's already ready to meet you there. If you look at the whole big picture, it can be overwhelming. Look at just today, because today is really all any of us have. Reach out to God. I think you'll be shocked by what God does and how he uses you. But it's amazing.